Hello, my name is Shankari and I'm the Principal Software Architect with the Standards and Reliability Pillar in the Joint Office of Energy and Transportation. As you might have seen, the motto of the Joint Office is that we are building a future where everyone can ride and drive electric. In this presentation, I will talk about how we aim to use open source to achieve this goal. The federal government knows that in order to tackle transportation emissions, we all need to come together. The U.S. National Blueprint for Transportation Decarbonization outlines a joint plan from four federal agencies, the Departments of Energy, Transportation, Housing, and the Environmental Protection Agency. Working closely with states, local communities, tribal communities, labor unions, nonprofits, and the private sector, the agencies will combine efforts to advance low and zero emission transportation solutions to reduce reliance on fossil fuels, create clean transportation jobs, and achieve President Biden's goal of achieving net zero emissions economy-wide by 2050. A key component of this decarbonization plan is building out a robust nationwide charging network. The current goal is to build out a nationwide network of 500,000 public chargers by 2030. We're 33% of the way towards that goal, so there will be a lot of chargers going into the ground in the next few years. The Joint Office supports several programs to help get to that goal of 500,000 chargers. The ones that are most relevant to this project are the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure, also known as NEVI, formula program, which provides $5 billion in funding to states to strategically deploy EV charging infrastructure along long distance travel routes. This will create a national charging network that inspires confidence in EV drivers. There is also the NEVI discretionary program, which provides $2.5 billion in grants for EV charging in communities. This will support multimodal access and mobility hubs, as well as options for those who do not have access to home charging. The other two programs provide funds for electrifying transit and school buses. The charging ecosystem is complex. There are a lot of moving parts and many stakeholders to engage in order to ensure that this network is truly reliable. The proposed NEVI minimum standards and requirements offer signals throughout the ecosystem to ensure that data is securely transferred from network to network, from network to grid, from charger to charger, and from the charger to the EV. The industry needs support to implement vehicle to grid standards and open charge point protocols, and we want to ensure that we assist in this effort. A key component of this assistance is helping to create an open source reference implementation of the charging stack. We have been working on the stack through the Applied Interoperability Project for about six months now, including several interviews with US stakeholders. We have heard very strong support around using the open source implementation for testing, particularly in three categories. First, we can set up a dockerized environment with the various layers running in containers or groups of containers. We can then experiment with all the ways in which the setup can break by killing containers, introducing latency into the virtual network, dropping packets, and so on. So we can monkey test the system in ways that may take years to manifest in the real world. Industry stakeholders can also use these dockerized containers to validate their software on an ongoing basis by integrating it into an automated testing pipeline. While this is likely too heavyweight for unit testing, scheduled weekly tests can ensure that changes to the custom code remain compatible with the full stack. And finally, for stakeholders that purchase integrated hardware and software modules, tabletop testing boxes, running the software open source components can support regular interoperability testing without waiting months for a testing event. None of these is a substitute for participating in testing events or field testing, but they can help address many of the changes up front, allowing test events and field testing to support more complex test scenarios or those weirdnesses don't ha that don't happen in software emulations. In addition, the open source reference implementation will assist in disseminating recommendations into production systems. For example, the ChargeX Consortium recently published a recommendation on the minimum required error codes for OCPP. These have now been incorporated into Everest. 
As ChargeX works through the details of how error codes work for OCPP 201, they can contribute the related implementation directly to Everest. All users of Everest will then automatically implement them when they upgrade to the, to the next version. And finally, uh, many of you may already be familiar with this figure since it is in the specification, but for those who haven't yet made it through the entire contents of the 481 page document, OCPP 201 now supports fairly complex energy management scenarios. These include a local controller and charging requests from the EV. This new functionality opens the door to grid integration. For example, the grid DSO or an aggregator can notify the CSMS of demand response events. The CSMS can then compute the max profile for participating facilities and push it down. The local controller can then, in turn, recompute the station charge profiles based on the currently negotiated power delivery requests from the EVs, including renegotiation as necessary. This functionality is high priority for the joint office, since it is literally an integration between the traditional energy and transportation sectors. Open source reference implementations allow domain experts to contribute reference versions of these complex modules, while allowing industry to easily incorporate them into production systems. The joint office has already been making contributions to Everest to implement this vision. To provide a gentle introduction to this end-to-end -end functionality, we have created simple software-in-the-loop demos that run in dockerized containers. Um, the link to the demo repo is right here. Using Docker, we can spin up multiple containers linked together with virtualized networks um, to generate an end-to-end -end system on a box. Through the EV simulator, we can start and stop charging sessions, view the messages being transmitted on the wire, and even simulate errors to evaluate resilience to unexpected conditions. Check back periodically to see templates for configuring and testing complex deployment scenarios. And now for the fun part, the live demos. Um, as I indicated, we have a repo on Everest that has single line software in the loop demos that are containerized. Um, so we essentially create a set of Docker containers that represents the various modules in Everest, um, a simulation UI, and for the more complex situations and scenarios, um, a CSMS um, that Everest can connect to. Um, you do not need to check out the repo to run these. We actually have single line commands that you can use to run them, although you do need to have Docker installed. Um, so we uh, do have Docker installed here. And so we're going to start with the simplest um, version of this charging, which is the AC charging demo. Um, this is also the version that has um, the uh, minimum recommended error codes incorporated. Um, so as you can see, when I run this, um, we just get the Docker Compose that corresponds to this. Um, and then we start Everest. Um, and Everest then um, starts up a bunch of modules um, and then um, indicates that it is in AC mode and it's ready to start charging. Um, I can then open up the simulator UI. And as you can see, um, there is a uh, car simulator <coughs> and a set of um, error codes that essentially correspond to the minimum record recommended error codes from ChargeX. So I can simulate a car plugin. Um, this will go through the standard uh, plugin process. So there is a dummy token. Um, that is received and validated. Um, and then the car starts drawing power. Um, you can see there are several IEC messages that are related to this. Um, and then we can actually go in here and put in an error message. So for example, I can select um, MREC pilot fault. Um, and the car stops charging. 
Um, and then when you unclick it, it starts charging again. And so you can simulate any of these errors and check the behavior of um, the charge station when the error occurs. Okay, so that's cool. Um, the second demo we're going to do is a slightly more complex version. So um, as you know from CFR 680, um, the goal is not just to have a recommendation for the connection between the car and the station, but also between the charge station and the CSMS. Um, so our next demo will actually um, set up all of those um, connections um, with encryption um, and contract certificate for authentication um, and actually do a CFR 680 compliant charging session. Um, so uh, before I do that, I just want to highlight here the charger states changed from time to time. And then finally, we stopped charging and the um, EV was disconnected. The um, CFR 680 compliant charge sessions um, are the with security profile three um, so that there is a certificate based authentication uh, between the um, just make sure that yeah uh, between the uh, station and the CSMS um, so the CSMS that we're using here is Meve, uh, which uh, is also presenting at this um, conference um, what this script does is it checks out Meve and then builds and runs it so uh, the MEV containers are starting. Um, it also has a certificate bundle, which it has um, unzipped so that um, there's, and the certificates have been copied in the right places so we can actually verify the certificate chain. These are currently self-signed certs because we don't want to check in anything that is specific to any particular PKI infrastructure. Um, although I, we, are considering adding in other certificate bundles so that with a command line option, you can test against um, popular PKI infrastructure um, platforms. So um, we start the CSMS, we add a charge station with security profile three, um, and then um, we add one user token, which is the dead beef token, as a valid token. Um, and then we start Everest, just like we did before. And in the same uh, or similar certificate chain is in um, Everest as well. So you can see it's, you know, host Docker internal, sub CA2, sub CA1, and then the root CA. Um, Everest then starts up. And you can see that the messages here are slightly different because now um, the message here says um, that um, it is uh, connecting to a TLS uh, WebSocket with Security Profile 3. Um, and you can see here that it's using OCPP 201. So, um, you know, we're, we are um, doing the right thing from a cybersecurity perspective. Um, and then I uh, received the boot notification um, response. Um, the errors here are just because the OCSP status doesn't work because uh, we do not have a, a correct um, CA configured. Um, and at this point, um, just uh, pull up the Docker desktop. Um, you can see in the Meve logs, um, 
that um, the CP001 um, was the charge point that was configured and there are several calls coming into it. Um, and if you check the manager, um, you should be able to see the boot notification uh, message that came in. Um, this the OCSP thing is just um yeah so you can see here that the boot notification message was received correctly um and responded to okay so now we're gonna go back here go back to our UI and actually try to start charging um so I'm gonna select the ISO 1511 a 2 plug and charge option from this drop down and then try to plug in the car um and as you can see here um in the everest logs um there is a a, a slack um matching uh, that that is successful and then there's a v2g session that starts with a contract cert um that then um sends the certificate um it, it gets the plug in charge certificate um it's a payment uh, is through a contract certificate the session set up and and so on happened properly um this then sends that over to the csms um and the csms is able to validate it um so the result for this token is that it is accepted um, and then the um, charge parameter discovery response is sent over and the charger state changes from charging to char uh, prepare charging to charging and if you look at the state here now it is charging and if you look at uh, the docker logs um and you search for say dead beef oh no actually we shouldn't be searching for dead beef because i'm not uh wait what was the the contract cert thing that was let's see uks whatever um yeah so as you can see that is received that is the email um and it is able to um it has the um, uh, the authorization certificate um, message that comes in here. There is a warning because uh, there is no CSP, but it's testing, so we are kind of ignoring that one little bit. But the request status is accepted. And so we have now um, used plug and charge to communicate between the station and the charger. The charger has sent the certificate with the CSMS. The CSMS has accepted it um, and the charge session has started and all of these connections have occurred via TLS. Um, I also want to highlight that if you wanted to debug this further, um, a lot of the logs are actually available um, here. So um, if you go back and you look at the Everest um, files, um, right at the beginning here, there's a message which says where the logging is happening. So the OCPP logs are being logged to temp or, or Everest OCPP logs. So we can actually go in here and pull out a nicely formatted um, log of the messages that are sent. There's also Everest logs, um, which you can take a look at if you're interested. Um, I am just going to pull the um, Uh, 
this HTML file. Um, and as you can see, um, you can actually see the full um, set of messages that are being sent uh, back and forth along this. Um, if we ignore all of the certificate status responses um, and just look uh, for, say, a transaction event request and response, um, or you know, setting charging profiles, um, we should be able to see um, Yeah, so here, for example, is a transaction event uh, with the transaction begin um, for the transaction that we just started and the EV is connected and it is authorized. So um, hopefully that was cool. Uh, I'm now going to shut this down just so it doesn't um, block the uh cause problems with the next run so we're just going to delete all of these containers and then the final demo that i wanted to highlight um was the uh, energy management demo um so again this is uh, an example of how a module in Everest does local energy management. Um, this has not yet been hooked up to OCPP, or at least we don't have a demo that shows it being hooked up to OCPP. Um, but since we are implementing the smart charging module in OCPP, um, I think we would like to hook this up and see what it looks like. Um, I'm just going to run um, that one directly using Docker Compose. Um, so again, we come here, should be able to see Um, the uh, so there are now two uh, potential um, EVs that can be charging at the same time. Um, I'm going to plug one in, and it's going to start charging. Um, and then I'm going to plug the other one in, and it's going to start charging at roughly the same level. And then I'm going to actually change the maximum watts that were requested. Um, and you can see that because this did not request as much, um, this um, EV actually got a lot more um uh energy delivered to it um if i put a limit on this as well it's actually low enough that it goes below the limit um and then here it starts charging again but it's still lower so you can basically um as the requests from the evs change the amount of power that is actually delivered across both of them also changes, which is really cool. And we really look forward to integrating this uh, with the OCPP smart charging um, functional groups. And that is it from me in terms of demos. Yes. Yes. The Joint Office has also begun contributing to the Everest code base. Through a contract with Accenture Federal, we have a dedicated dev team that is working on filling in gaps with Everest that are aligned with federal priorities. 
at least initially, this has been the smart charging functional block um, in OCPP 201. As you can see, we have already implemented several requirements related to storing and validating profiles. Our next, our next task is to implement stacked charging profiles. We're also working closely with a group of Everest early adopters on understanding the barriers to deploying Everest on production systems, such as interfacing with custom hardware. Through our contract with Accenture Federal, we are also creating documentation to address these challenges. If you would like to be an Everest early adopter, let us know. We started with funding and we will end with it as well. The NEVI and CFI programs are distributed to states and other agencies to get chargers in the ground. The new Communities Taking Charge Accelerator 4 is different because it is interested in exploring and accelerating deployments of more innovative technologies such as managed charging and micromobility. In what might be a first for the federal government, the funding opportunity does not only call out standards, but explicitly requires open source implementations of those standards. This allows us to ensure that federally funded innovations are quickly available to industry and can be deployed at scale expeditiously. If you're interested in applying to this FOA, please note that the deadline is at the end of this week. Open source projects are only as strong as their communities. The best ones are not just a way to get free software, but also provide a focal point for industry, academia, and nonprofits and the private sector to come together, collaborate, and innovate at scale. We hope that you will bring your unique perspective, your instrument, to the band so that we can make beautiful music together. Thank you. Um, and I would like to end by highlighting opportunities to engage further with the Joint Office.